Synthesis, a fundamental idea by Jay Vollmer. Um, I'm just really going to run through a few bits that just show you why synthesizers are so important and basically are used in pretty much every genre. There's a few that obviously don't use it because it's not characteristic. Or, but any new genre that's emerging, be it minimal house or dubstep, they're using synths heavily, which is the main part of main part of their thing. So the history of the synthesizer dates back around 120 years when a machine called the Teleharmonium was recognised as the first electronic instrument. This was created by Theodos Cahill in the year 1897 but was only shown to the public in the year 1906. It weighed around seven tonnes and this also referred to as a dynaphone. It's, so it's this massive piece of equipment basically the size of this room and it basically this is what it consisted of. It had um, 145 modulation dynamos employing a number of specially geared shafts associated and, and associated inductors to produce an alternating current of different audio frequencies. These signals were controlled by a multiple set of poly, polyphonic velocity sensitive keyboards, 36 octaves, 36 notes per octave, that's basically what it was. Um, and it used a tone wheel which is a a vital part of the process. It uses an electronic motor and gearbox to rotate a set of discs with different grooves that generate a set of frequencies. This is the basic principle that all early synthesizers would have been based on and are still based on today. But instead of using but instead by using programs such as Maximus P reactor, we only use small pieces of RAM to run these massive components. Well they're basically small components instead of having God knows how much. So it, it's also common that amplifiers were invented. It's a common fact that amplifiers were invented 20 years later. So they had to listen to the noises through telephone headsets. Well, basically, um, to produce quality hardware and software synthesizers that we take for granted, no matter what, no matter what synth has been brought in the past, the fundamental, the fundamental idea was created here. But the theory was actually created by a guy called Joseph Fourier, who was a, who was in the French. Like he was Napoleon's right hand man, basically. He was like his advisor slash and he basically drew up a lot of the the actual theory behind it, which is what I went on to research in this paper, but I'll give you a little bit of information about Joseph. He was uh, an orphan at the age of nine, taken to study in a church. While studying religious syllable he excelled in maths to become a professor at the Ecoli Polytechnique, which is quite a well known Quite a well-known piece in uh, France. It's like a, what is it? It's like a university now, isn't it? And he's like <coughs> a, a massive part of it. Well, he was. He was basically top boy, to it. <laughs> top boy, right? But there's a list of hit other synthesizers that followed shortly after, which are obviously massively influential to this to what we now take for granted as such a simple, simple task. Well, because you know what I mean. Your your computer comes with a set amount of synthesizers which is just ridiculous and the maths behind it is insane but um right I'm gonna craft right type different types of synthesis which are clearly stated up on the board which are uh, FM subtractive and additive I've just gotta find my piece of paper which actually tells me correctly what they are. I've gone for the more information approach rather than pictures and stuff like that. I thought I'd sound better if I just constantly talked for 15 minutes, but I don't know, you'll be the judge of that obviously. Um, so basically I'm going to start with additive. This builds on the fundamental wave known as the carrier, adding the most complex features of the original waves together to make the final pattern. For a simple harmonic oscillator, each of these sine waves has a frequency of the integer, the integer multiple of the fundamental frequency and we call these the harmonics of the sound. So that's basically that's more of a general a general way it works as well. That's basically that th those rules like by times in the integer multiple that basically works out how they make the harmonics. Like if that's the same with FMs and as well if you if you sort of go for it. Well basically subtractive or analogue as it's sometimes called basically works by taking away sound from the wave. So You've got two waves essentially. I might even get on the board for this. Just to uh, do a little diagram. Is there a pen anywhere? Uh, yeah. Because, well. 
Uh, burn enough, I tell you that. Right, I'm gonna while I'm while we're doing that as well, I'm gonna quickly get switch over to show you some some FM synth bits that I've been working on at home because basically it's the most. Cheers, that's right. Yeah, just pull that one down, do we? Yeah. Do it like a little bit. Yeah, I don't want to do it too much, isn't it? Basically, I'll just take it back to. I'm losing my marbles up here. It's the heat, I tell you. Um, basically, you've got your two waves, two sine waves, which is standard. That's your sine wave. That's a poor sine wave, but that's the the point where it goes up and down in the middle. So this would probably be zero dB. I don't really. I can't remember, I haven't got a diagram with me either, but basically you'll have two different waves. So say the next one's some sort of square wave, it'll basically combine these two waves, so it'll give you a new pattern, which is essentially something like that. Basically half of one and the other, but it'll obviously match it to whichever it thinks is best. Right, now I've messed up all my sheets, people, but um, I'm about to switch it over and I'll show you some examples of FM synth and then I'll tell you more about that in uh, two seconds. Um, this is a track that I made at home. I'll uh, just quickly take you back to this die. It's basically drum and bass, but I've used FM synth. I've used, if you can see all these channels up here, I've sort of based what well, I've used the presets and then I've altered them, changed like the. Uh, well, I'll get the synthesizer off, we can have a look at it. Basically, the way it works is by adding harmonics together and then. Um, yeah, basically gives you a more complex wave pattern, which is how uh, pretty much every big producer that you can think of, like Dead Mouse, um, Camo and Crooked, they're all using FM synth. Like they'll probably use other plugins as well, but the main core sound will come from this sort of synthesizer. And artists like Break as well. It depends what you're into, really. But I'm guarantee you, the big boys are using this. This is a bit of a dodgy mix down as well, so I can't apologise for that. I don't know what it will sound like for the speakers, but this is just like I've actually filtered and like high passed all of these bits to create the random effects that you can hear in the background. I'll solo it and show you it all afterwards as well, so you can have a little bit of what makes it together. through these speakers, I'm not going to try and cover it up, it sounds a bit dodgy to be honest, but the, basically the complex sounds that put together are loads of layers of these different sounds that are basically sort of like they shine through different different qualities and stuff like that, so to make the first bass <coughs> sound that you heard then, it's just that tiny, tiny reverse, <laughs> that is not the right bit, right this is the first bass line that comes in, sorry. Uh, this is part one, and then there's another two parts. And that's so you've got like one that's got the more metallic, sort of rugged sound, one that's sort of like distorted, and one that just sort of you want to sort of fill up different frequency bands with each with each part of it. All right, I'll just switch it back to this way. Software we use today, basically the main software that I've I've only recently just got into this using this EFM EFM one, <coughs> and it's just yeah the quality of it is ridiculous basically it's just it's really solid synth and it just comes free as a plugin on Massive which I didn't know, but before that I was actually using Massive which is pretty much industry standard another bit of kit that a lot of people will have this is just a standard sub bass setup how I've got it now which is. Basically, I'm going to teach you how to make a quick sub wave, sub sub bass actually, because I don't know, it's like it's such a standard part, but like 
if you want if you've got not got good quality sub bass then your track will be lacking this might not work for these monitors yet again you might only be able to hear like a faint a faint bit but basically I'll, go, I'll just show you it now through the preset that I've already made at home um, and then I've got some just so many presets that I just make at home because it's just so much easier having them right let's get this little See, I've got it all the levels on May. Okay, I'm going to try just getting it. It's not, doesn't sound like it's coming through, so... You've got the, it's been so, so loud. Yeah, nice one, <laughs> Thank you for that. What I've actually done to this particular one as well is I've actually changed the, the oscillator time, so it actually... Basically, it sort of moves as one. I've put them all so the notes notes are in one thing, so it'll follow the whole track is followed and it peaks and dips. But the bass line never stops; it's a constant, so you don't get the the taps and the the problems that you'd get from like I, I can't think of the word to describe it. But basically, if it comes in and it's too hard, it's too heavy, then it it sounds out of out of place. If you know what I mean. So this is just a quick example. But basically what I did to create this, it's really simple. Can you hear the dips and the... Which is basically what I did on the oscillator by just changing this simple. So, basically, you just get your normal square, square wave, or it might even be a sawtooth, I'm not actually totally sure. Yeah, it's a square saw one, so it's a bit of both. But you just get that wave, and then you just turn your intensity down, which it's all, this is the preset loaded as it is. Lo you just turn the intensity, the, y, the WT position and the intensity down to zero, so it just leaves you with like the really bottom fundamental of a square wave, no, a sine wave, sorry. And then you just low pass it to basically just to sort of exacerbate and show how, or just to increase the levels, and then add a distortion which you may think is a not a good idea. Um, my computer has broken. Yeah, um, well, I would show you more, but it's not happening. I don't really understand. Right, yeah, right, massive. This is what happens when you use crack software as well, people. So I can't, I can't stress to you enough how you should buy your software, but who actually does well? I'm going to continue on reading from what I've got here then, because that's basically <laughs> cut my, my um, example part short. But, um, okay, I was going to show you how to route as well, which is basically, you know what we've been doing in the studio with all those wires? You can basically do exactly the same thing on, on Massive if you go into this performance. Oh, I wish it was working. <laughs> if you go into the performance side, basically, it just allows you, you just, you basically put it, so instead of, all of these going into these two at the same time, these two filters, the oscillators go into one and then they go into the other. It's, well, it just basically it's sort of like FM synth in a way, but I can't really demonstrate because I've got my presets made, but I might have to restart my computer to be honest. Just, um, yeah. Okay, well I don't know how I'm doing for time, but my computer's completely frozen, so I'm just gonna switch back over and just conclude conclude my my um presentation. Well it didn't go entirely to plan, which is a bit annoying because I had some quite complex things that I wanted to show you. But basically just this just the the industry is full of producers capable of making electrical plugins and new noi new noises that shape and create genres. In the future, mu this is the future of music, as we can synth synthetically recreate any fundamental sounds we want. <coughs> and just, like, there's certain sounds that, like, completely shape genres that you can't actually make without synthesizers, if you know what I mean, like dubstep wobbles, just the perfect example, like, you wouldn't have been able to make anything like that unless you used a synthesizer, and if you look at dubstep at the minute, it's, it's taken over, so... It's just, it just shows you what we can actually do with this equipment if we use it in the correct way. Uh, 
Thank you very much for listening. Sorry about the stoppy starty jokus of a presentation, but yeah, nice one, guys. Burr.